There we go. There we go. Okay. So, uh, let's see. There we go. Quick introduction. This is a game called Altered. It's a relatively new French trading card game uh, that I've described before. There is an online implementation on Board Games Arena. Um, I've been testing decks. Right now, I very much, I very much prefer the Alter Faction, which isn't exactly the strongest at the moment, tournament-wise, but it has some interesting stuff. It has a particular, um, why is, it, why is the screen flickering like that? Why is the screen, okay, it's not liking the, okay. So, where was I? Right, um, Altered, pretty fun. Uh, I like Axiom as a faction the most just because I like steampunk stuff. Um, it's not the strongest faction. It's been putting up some decent numbers, but the strongest faction right now is like hit, hit the shoulders above everybody else, which is kind of annoying. But what I want to do right now is test a few key concepts. Uh, the hero I'm playing is called Sierra and Oddball. Uh, she has the ability that allows me to generate a free brass bug token every single time a 3 plus mana artifact gets played. And there are quite a few of those. But as you can see right now, I play against a control deck that lets me uh, go first or take the turn instead of them, giving them a choice of how to counter my cards. And they played it very, very well. That's really annoying actually. But that's all right, because I am going to now see two no i'm just going to uh oh no i need to remove one from mana oh okay okay so get rid of this for now i don't really need that i do go first i don't want that to be played i do use one mod to produce a brass bug on hero side uh, to win, you have to get these tokens to be on the same section, wherever that might be. And to do that, you have to win. Uh, you have to win either the hero side of the expeditions or the companion side of the expeditions. And they decide to pass on turn. Nice. So we're tied. And winning it. It's easier on some terrain does. This one can only be won if you win the grass type attacks. This one can be won if you win either of these. In order to stop them from advancing, you have to be able to beat them on both, which is, can, can be kind of annoying. Um, for this one, I'm going to get rid of Ada. No, no, not Ada. I'm going to get rid of the boom. Pan side. So being able to win both lanes at once is kind of nasty. It's also really, really hard. Oh, so nobody wins that one. That's fine. Kraken's Wrath just tosses everything back. That's fine. I want this to be there in the first place. In fact, this actually makes it easier for me because this was cheap to put down and allows me to play this into reserve, which will, thanks to her ability, draw me an extra card. And that's overall win for me. So I still advance. She does it despite playing a very expensive control card. And now I one step closer to winning. All I need to do is get them to get on the same square anywhere that's available on the map. That can be easier said than that, than done. But I am confident overall that I know what I'm doing. Get rid of you. I don't need you right now because there's nothing in to get rid of. Dun, 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 dun. Now this is hard to win because I need to always be ahead of them on water. But as long as I, as long as I'm winning on either of these two, then I'm fine, right? Which is really really important. Now I don't want to use this yet, but I also don't want to use you. You know what? Yes. Uh, 
So theoretically, if I have two bugs over here, it makes it that much harder for them to stop me from advancing, right? And since I'm one step ahead of them, one turn ahead of them, uh, I don't care if they beat me on any slots as long as I win the other one. So this is a very much a game about uh, aerial control, about worker placement, about uh, limited decision making. Discard a card in their hand. Get rid of you. Because I see that they burn through a lot of resources just to do that. Meaning that if I just place, it, place this down here, it should be beneficial for me. Yep, as I thought, they had nothing to play for two mana, meaning that I win both. And now they're two steps behind me. No. One, two, three. Three steps. They're totally three steps behind me. They do have something else they can play. I need to discard one landmark, though, and this one's empty, so let's discard that one. Ooh, I drew my biggest possible card. That's very nice. Let me get rid of the spell. Now, because I am so far ahead of them, the fact that they can possibly counter this doesn't bother me too much. Or they just get rid of it, which is fine as well, because it doesn't matter. As long as I beat them on one side, I'm fine. Now, they probably have something to play on this turn. They don't. That's even better. I can't beat them over there. That's fine. Now, if I win on both sides next turn, I win the game outright. Um, it's likely that, however, by 8 mana, they have something to play in their hand. It'll be a little nasty. Okay, good. I'm gonna get rid of you. I have a boom and stock to help me win the next one. Pay one. This side is easier to win, so I put it down here. And I'm gonna try for this one anyhow, just to keep the pressure onto them. Also, grabs me an extra card. Oh, that's the perfect card to grab, because it just means I can dirtle a little longer. Now, I don't want them to be able to use that, so let's prevent them from being able to cast spells. And they spent 8 mana as well, which means that this is probably the most... Yeah, they were fully invested. They had to be able to stop me right there and then, and they had a spell in hand to do so. But now it doesn't matter. It was probably a, a Kraken's Wrath. It would have stopped me dead in my tracks. Um, but it doesn't matter, because I was able to kill that one with the boom before they were able to do anything. Altered Addict. That's probably true. That's fair. I got bit by Mosquito. It's somewhere in this room. It's nice and fat now. I should be able to catch it easy. But it's just barely out of reason. I don't see it anywhere. I'm all itchy. Sucks. So yeah, uh, so far so good. The theory for this deck is fine. Brass Bug Hub is actually doing a lot of work in combination with the hero ability. So, like, a landmark focus should theoretically be playable. I'm not sure if I have the deck ratio right, though, or the deck emphasis. And it's a little slow, which is unfortunate because faster decks will simply stomp you over. Token decks like Ordis Sigismar was already proving a lot of trouble. And it's not my ranked deck either, which is going to be a lot more consistent and faster. I just wanted to see if the card pool I have available sort of supports Sierra. I kind of get the feeling that Sierra just gets more powerful the better landmarks are, print, uh, are printed, you know. Especially the rare ones. Like, there might even be a case that I want to get rid of the Brass Bug Hubs in exchange for more draw power. Just so that I'm able to do whatever I want. 
The main combination for this deck isn't even the Brass Bug Generators. It's the ability to play, or even three mana plus uh, landmarks really, is the ability to play Rare Jammer with uh, Rare Boom. Because uh, the Jammer allows me to... The Rare Jam has uh, comes into play Sabotage, both on cast and on exit from the landmark section, which is just completely broken. Uh, so it's just a matter of whether or not I'm able to access it in a timely fashion. So I want to keep this, this, and this is actually questionable. Um, I want to keep... I feel like Kraken's Wrath is a big card to play in this situation. So let's go with that. I take that Nara's going to play a lot of stuff with Anchored, which basically means that instead of going to the reserve pool after they come out of your hand, they, uh, oh no, sorry. Instead of, yeah, no, 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 no that's right. Instead of going to the reserve pool at the end of the turn, uh, they just get, they just stay there for the next round, which is really, really annoying. Going second is always preferable in this game, actually, because it, it, you're just able to scout out a lot better uh, where you actually want to go. Boom is so tempting. Let's get rid of Copelio for now. So the whole reason to play this was to make this cheaper. If I ran into anything that I want to use one mana for. That's not the case though. I can just play this right away. Play a companion side because companion side is the easiest to win. Uh, the beginning you can just win in any one of the three stats and you advance. Right, this is um, it's harder to stalemate than it is to advance in this game because you need to stop every single symbol shown on the card, and these are randomized. Like in a real world game, you would shuffle the middle three cards and then put them and like rearrange them however you want before like putting them down face down, so you never actually know what the next terrain is actually going to look like. Um, I leave this alone, they've already played two mana. I feel like this is a safe play. Yeah, pass. Yep. We both advance. That's a nice peaceful turn. We both got what we wanted. Like, it's much, much easier to... Well, it's hard to tie, necessarily. Although there are tiebreaker rules. But it's relatively easy to advance as needed in this game, compared to others. So it feels pretty good, you know? You might not be able to stop them from winning, but you can't necessarily be stopped yourself. Uh, I don't need this because I already have one in play. I really don't want two. It'd be two would be a little overkill. Two, I feel, would just be more than I'd really need. Uh, I mean, let's go for a hand for your reserve. You do. I get one boost. That's fine. That's pretty good. Let's put you on. Let's see. I need to win. Actually, no. This is a case where I can stop them actually because it's really expensive for them to do anything else. Whereas I can always put out Capelia. Yeah. This is so. This is harder than it would normally be if it was simply on a one element land. But because I'm able to have more stats than them in both mountain and water, this one won't allow them to advance. And they'll need to double down their investment over here, whereas I can still put down stuff on the other end to allow me to go through. So again, it's a lot harder to lose than it is to win at any one moment, but it is in fact possible to lose. Alright, uh, what did they do? Oh, they put down a 5-3. Uh, that's fine, that's all of their... That was all of their possible actions. I feel like I don't need a Coppelia compared to having this available to me. Let's see how they play if there's a threat of removal. Let me see, what's my best possible play? I need to get rid of that, period. They need to advance through Earth terrain to... Well, actually, I can use just two for that. This is the lowest commitment I can make. Get rid of their strongest stuff. 3-3-3 three, three, three is kind of hard to beat. But I can stop them here. Get rid of the Asleep, which will cause me issues. So that's the double sabotage. Their entire uh, reserve line was wiped out. That's great. 
This, this is a sleep as well, so it doesn't actually benefit them yet. That's great. Like, they would have to double invest and go for low hand in order to move this side or move on that side. And if they're simply moving on this side, that's fine with me. In fact, I'm quite willing to win on this side outright. So no matter what, I'm still advancing. I still have a bigger hand than them. And yeah, I win pretty hard. Actually, no, we're tied. We're tied. Uh, we're tied on movement, but not on resources. But now to be aware that this side is really, really hard to challenge. Because there's, there's four stats on his... On, we're both fighting over the same stat now. That, it's harder to fight on this side. Unless I use this. That's really nice. So the rare version of Keel on Burst allows me to generate tokens as long as I have two uh, landmarks. Which is what this deck is all about. Landmark generation. Put that way, I don't need you. Or I can use... Oh shit, Kraken's Wrath. Let me see, if I use Kraken's Wrath, I would still have two mile left over. That is pretty advantageous for me. That sets the back pretty significantly. I think I might still be able to win one area, but it'll be tough. Yeah, they might get a turn up on me, actually. Yeah, that was the correct play. Uh, it's really hard for me to challenge all that. Shit, actually, yeah, it's hard for me to do anything about that. Maybe that maybe cra maybe I got a little too aggressive with Krakens, but I do want this in the back line. In the reserve pool. So I'll cast this out just to have it out. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um uh, wow. I think I might lose this one actually. Um, they definitely had fewer, they had less card advantage than I did, but they were able to marshal a lot better with the few advantages that I did have, especially with Anchored. That's annoying. That's all right, though. You're too expensive to come out from hand, so I'll get rid of you for now. Sabotage is not going to help me. This does. Spend four to get rid of you. I'm going to need to win both sides, so this will be tricky. Oh, but they overinvested. Hard discard. Still one left. I mean, they can still win if they have anything in, car in, in their hand that can be played for four mana and has stats to win one region. The best I can do is survive another turn. But not if we tie. Okay, that helps. I don't think they have anything else. What does that do? They had something else. Shit, that was well played. Okay, GG. I still believe that having Boom and... 
Well, that's the thing, right? I don't have the rare version of it. And even if I did, it was the wrong turn to be able to take advantage of it, so that, that sucks. But rare boom and rare jammer should theoretically be a very, very annoying combo to face. Um, I just wish that Sierra actually activated on artifacts, sorry, on permanents, one mana smaller on two. At which point she would be really, really broken. But the lack of access to two means that running uh, Jammer has to be a very deliberate choice, especially in the rare slot, because you only get 15 rares in the first place. I'm also not seeing anything, anything else I put in here. It's like something about Jammer has been giving me the same cards. Basira, Basira exhausts me to give additional boost to stuff that already has boost. That's really, really powerful. I think my play here is to keep Ada, keep Coppelia because of Ada, keep Axiom uh, Salvager. You get a 39 card deck, 40 cards total, including your hero. So space is limited. Everything's divisible by three for easy deck building. You can have a minimum of 13 different cards. That's always nice to know. Oh, save on the card. I don't feel a particular rush to get out just yet. Um. But Sierra's going to be really annoying. Getting rid of the stuff that has boost is going to be inherently powerful. So let's keep the Kraken's Wrath in hand. Okay, I know they're going to end up in Water Region stacks, which I don't have lost as to beat. But gain Cop... Oh, right. Confirm target. Copilla can go back out in... Asleep, so she doesn't contribute stats, but she also doesn't, doesn't go away at the end turn, which is really nice for me. <laughs> and she'll be contributing to grass element type next round at two points for effectively free investment. That's really, really nice for me. Unfortunately, I didn't draw into any. Uh, I only drew into the Brassbug Hive, which is nice and all, but I need two landmarks to access uh, Athena's ability. This is a good song. Heart of Glass by Alahai and Ray Chen. I'm liking a lot of their songs a lot, I find it. I should really look into who they are. Yeah, Athena will become Mana. <laughs> Haven Trainee is... Okay, that's a little annoying, but that's alright. I can't really stop them from winning that side, so I'll just advance where I'm strongest. And if they really want to challenge on this side, I can slap this down for three. It's four to win on... Yeah, even with the boost, it won't be enough. Oh, five now. Yeah, let's just pass. Can't really do much about that. Yeah, let's just give what we want with minimum investment. Put that aside for now. Now, unfortunately, at six mana, it's my best play. Am I might simply to beat to Brassbug? Because I can't get rid of this with uh, Kraken's Wrath. I don't really want to overinvest on Coppelia and. Uh, Brassbug Hub. So invoke Brassbug on the section that I'm most confident in winning. That'll give me free six points. <laughs> and 
And we're both at the same overall pace. Actually, I should have won on my side. Uh, on the companion side, because, um, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's a tactical error. I forgot that for both of us right now, it's really easy to win the, the alternate side, because we've just been struggling at this end. And now we're really willing to challenge the other. But actually... Uh, maybe I still win. No, I don't. Best they can do is stall uh, stalemate. Uh, best, the best outcome for me is that we stalemate on this. No, we don't stalemate. They advance on grass. Shit. I should put it on the other side. I'm so dumb. I overinvested on um, the idea of just like winning on one track. The first movement for any, for either hero or companion is easy. And now he gets to keep that one. But he, he doesn't know to have Kraken's Wrath though, so that's fine. I'm still okay. Just kind of annoying. I might even be able to double win on the next one. They have to discard one though. They'll probably discard a spell. I would. Nope. I want to keep Joan as my end game option. I'll get rid of you. What I want to do is just play these two. Oh, right. Comparing side this time. Make it easier for myself. Now, what I'm hoping to do... Yeah, that's a big one. Now, I'm hoping to get them to over-invest. <laughs> Uh, pass on that because I don't have anything to uh, trigger the other one. Good, they did overinvest. That makes this so much sweeter. Now I double win, and now that would put me equal to them. That's nice. Because they'll have one mile left. There's not a whole lot you can do with that. Yeah, baby double fats. Now, this is the hard part, though. Because it's really easy for them to win this side. Or at least relatively easy. But I have to win on mono elements. Especially on something that he already wants to challenge on. That's hard. Okay, so, actually, no, things just got a lot easier for me. Because I already do... Oh, wait, no. Um, no. Get rid of this one. Yes. See, that's what happened. Now, I go first. So, I can get rid of that annoying thing. Uh, let's do brass on this side, so I have three stats on the elements that he wants to challenge on. Go over here to minimize the... He has a really good, really good Haven trainee. Like, that is just a beautiful one. So getting rid of that makes things a lot easier for me overall. It's still possible to, for him to win pretty, pretty bluntly, but... Um, I have a lot of ways to uh, try to take, try to wrest control of the game back. Because he's going to try to play something here to double up on it. If I play something, if I play 3-3. Three, three, and this just makes my next turn so much better too. Yeah, let's do that. Because when... Joan D'Arc leaves the Expedition Zone, create a Brass Bugs token on each of your Expeditions, and you got three threes because all Brass Bugs, when they join Expeditions, gains a one boost. So that's just, that's huge. It would guarantee that my next win is massively in my favor. I should say the word guarantee when I'm not saying I'm going to win. It would make my next turn much easier to win from. And given that I am at 6-6-6 six, six, six on that side, that's also just really, really solid. Even if they win, they can't actually do that much. 
I bring something to five. I'll pass turn. They can probably win on this side. They win one point. But my next turn is going to be explosive. Mother Reaping. No, my arrogance has cost me. No, wait, not side. That's fine. That might have actually made the game significantly hard for them. <laughs> Oops, I forgot. Uh, Joan has natural protection against the removal because of the uh, whole thing about leaving expeditions, right? That includes being uh, dunked into into discard or removed from game or to mana, really. Um, I don't think that they fully anticipate that because now I win if they can't stop this side from advancing. And they only have one mana left. Nice! Yeah. I made this in the... I made this with co with control as this orientation, with a lot of removal, with a lot of, like... A lot of sabotage effects. And especially with Joan the Arc as basically the best possible removal win condition. And that... No matter what you do, you can get a ton of value out of her. No matter how they try to interact with her, even if they boom her, uh, you're still going to benefit. Especially if you can set up some uh, brass bug uh, interactions to go with that. But the main thing is, I'm able to play. Uh, I'm able to play permanents to give me situational permanent advantages and still find my way through. Since they will generate brass bugs for me. Um, but yeah, brass bug high is the right play on that one. Are they just lagging out? They're still in the game. Are they just rage quitting? That's annoying. I think they're rage quitting. They got really mad that their own spell didn't just remove it, but also gave me the extra benefit. And now they're 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 letting the timer stall out. You will get punished for this though. You can get your account locked out if you do this too often. Just like let the wind go through. It's casual mode, it's not ranked. I'll show you my rank deck in a minute. Or at least it's overall performance. And that's in about like 20 seconds after their after the time relapse over here. Then I can tell the program to give it another like 20 second countdown to quit. And expel them from the game. That will ding your board game arena score. And if you do that enough, your karma will go to zero and they will get rid of your count. Don't do that. Just be honorable, allow the allow the loss to go through. So yeah, BJ does have a reputation system, although the reputation metric is simply whether or not you're a rage quitter. Or if you just like... Like, not everything's going to get your reputation dinged, but definitely just rage quitting and leaving a game like that to lag out definitely counts. Okay, let's try some uh, arena play now. This will be the ranked mode. Right now I'm like two points away from gold. Now, the fun thing about being able to play on uh, Board Game Arena for Altered is that they've worked out a deal where Board Game Arena will pull from Altered's uh, databases for deck access. So you are literally playing with your physical collection, or rather your scanned collection, right? Um, that's why there is a proper rank system for this game already on launch online, even though they technically don't have an official app. This guy's already gold. I just shit my head. Anyhow, my main deck is still in Axiom, but it is a, a Subash focus deck, which uh, I discarded cards in my hand into reserve to create tokens right away uh, for one mana at noon. So I'm able to reliably trigger the from reserve effects in exchange for some card advantage. Uh, this is too soon, as are these, but this is great.
My deck, is, however, is not fully optimized, which is why I call it a 0.7 version, because I'm like three or four cards away from having a complete version. Let's get that out. In early Haven, Bravo Smash is one of the most powerful plays you can have. It just makes everything coming out for reser from reserves that much more powerful, which is great for me, for obvious reasons. So he will be beating me for one slot, which is fine, whatever. Because he beats about all my stats, plus has one more. So he gets advanced. We have nothing on this side. That's not too bad. I don't particularly care. Um, the main thing is that Baba Yaga does give him a card, though, which is kind of annoying. Well, that's... That's no longer a problem. Um, I don't need the another, another ear heart. I'll instead Brass Bug and the Tinkerbell to get some companion pressure. And since I start, I'll just play Tinkerbell on this side. Knock out Baba Yaga. So now I have dual pressure. Tinkerbell came from reserve, so she's a 2-4-4. She does go away the end turn, though. She doesn't go back to reserve, which is the annoying part with playing this deck. You have to be very, very careful about your hand and the reserve management. But in exchange, you just have par right away. Without having to play extra cards to get uh, to get around uh, your limitations. <laughs> you sleep, my tink. Okay, well, that's actually really annoying. I mean, I get to keep tink for the next fight, which is really really nice, but in exchange. Uh, she is now two steps ahead of me. He is now two steps ahead of me. Uh, final Sasenka. Although because I already have, because they slept my tink, I no longer need to worry quite as much about, actually, maybe not you. That's a little too expensive. I want access to Hook, because Hook is probably one of the most interesting spells. One of the best uses of the unique mechanics of this game. To allow you to transfer between uh, various sides. If they try to overinvest on one side or the other, Hook is a really nice way to... Uh, because they're like a really, really nice way just to... Uh, Take back the temple. Or even to force it on one end that they not they're not ready to fight on. Although I'm not at that point. Let me see. They're winning by four. I can stop them from moving at least. And they're at one mod now, so they don't have anything to stop that. The Flamo and Kadik. Kedi Giren Mage Dancer. It's a really nice combination. Another sleep. That's so annoying. Because of five now. What can I do? I'll just pass. I can't stop him from winning that side, but I will win on the other. So let's not overinvest. I think my best bet is actually to get rid of the hook now. And drop a big old brass bug. Like, he's very likely to still win on one side. I 
I'll pass on something of Brass Bug and set up for a much better turn after this phase. Now, if I can't take advantage of the next turn, however, I am setting him up for potential win next turn. But that's all right. Yeah, he'll win on that side, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Big old win. Oh, you might be able to win both. That's really annoying. No, if he casts... No, actually, no. Cause, no, no, no. If he casts this, he won't be able to stop me from moving. So he might also... Like, he needs to be able to beat all three stats, because I'm still at the beginning over here. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was planning to do with that because it doesn't. Oh, he just stops me. He stops me all right. So that's so that's actually really, really good. My sweet sky, my sweet sky. Yeah, I have a lot of good plays on this hand. A lot of really solid ones. I will get rid of you because it's redundant. I'll invoke Brass Bug on this side as easiest. Invoke Brass Bug on here. Play Copel Hero Side because her stats are advantageous for the next one out. Uh, I don't really need to discard. I kind of want to keep it. So go for that. Go for that. And pass. As long as I have three left to respond to whatever they play, that's great. No, they got rid of one. But I am perfectly all right with that. Being able to remove a permit like that was definitely on the more expensive end, but luckily I still have plans. Spackcraft is fine. I don't really need that. And I still have a Super Copelia next turn, so that's that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Let's get rid of the... You know what? I don't need you. And now I'm just going to make sure my... Companion moves. Unfortunately, I'm one mod short from being able to play the Salvager for a boost, but that's fine. I think having the Brass Bug Hive in position is much more important. Why did you play this? Just to sabotage? But you didn't choose anything to sabotage. Oh, because it was from... Um, from Reserve. Oh, that's why. Yeah. That makes sense. That nets them a card. If they need one more point to move on that track. Or to stop me from moving on the track, rather. Which they might be able to do. Well, they can. Because they can always uh, help in hand. Which will be really annoying. Now I want to win really hard at least one side. However, I'm at 8 mana now, which means I can just keep the rest of the cards in my hand. Because I can play most of them. And invoke Razbug Hive on companion side. On hero side. And play Coppelia on companion side, where she'll be most beneficial. Dun, dun, dun. Perfect. Oh, that's the best possible result. Actually, that's a little annoying. Because I, I can put them in reserve, but then they just come out and they gain another boost. If I pull three stats over here, what can you do? You can match it. And possibly more. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to force him to do so. 
Because right now, he's in a position where that's going to return every single turn, anyhow. So, force this out. And the question is, do I want to use Hooked to mess with his calculations a little bit? Um, I can't give this up to 8, but then I lose the ability to move forward. So, what if I just give up on this side? Just in case, you know. Yeah, that was expected play. Can't really stop him from doing so. There's a couple of things I can draw into that will make this irrelevant. Um, and with two cards to turn and me no longer putting stuff in mana, it's not the most unlikely result, but it will be difficult. So, oh, nice. Well played. Prevents the super kill player, which is the right move. That helps so much. And it might still not be enough. <laughs> no, it is actually, because it has to come out fleeting, which means that if I use this, it gets discarded. Back to hand. But if I use this, I'll neutralize effectiveness. I still leave enough mana for a Keylon Burst. Damn, he outsmarted me. Or not outsmarted, but outplayed. Uh, there's nothing I can do about this. Yeah, it still leaves them with two mana to play the Bravo's Blade Dancer. I was a step behind. That's all there was to it. But yeah, this this deck in Jerry brass bugs up the wazoo. It's just exceptionally good at it. It's a pretty good mid range check, I feel. But you'll run into situations where they're just like one step ahead, and there's nothing you can do really do about it because it's any good deck's gonna have some level of disruption, right? You can't really stop a good deck from disrupting your deck. You can only hope that your Something that can also respond properly. Lost two points of that. That your disruption comes out before theirs or at, in response to theirs. So you can get a proper timing out of it. Oh, no. Capella focus. Forgot. This one. The whole reason why I call it Copelia Focus is because uh, my friend gave me their Copelia. I have one Copelia of my own, giving us two Copelias. They might as well go in the same deck. Uh, Ogun is a really powerful card. Ogun rare, especially. I feel like Keelan Burst is a little too situational at a start, so I'll go with this opening. Pay 
Pay one to get Coppelia out right away and a Brass Bug. Let's put it on hero side. Play Coppelia, companion side. This does mean I can just double down on the hero side as well. Or force it to split attention. It'll be easier to beat this side. So that's where I want their attention to be. Instead, they're going over there. That's fine. We both win. What they're gambling on is for the Coppelia to be a little less... Like, if this was a water element side, then Coppelia would actually be useless. So, that was actually a smart play. I will not say that they chose poorly. I don't want to use Boom yet. In fact, they may, Boom may not actually see much use in this one. Because it's a very strong control deck. After you give her the second mover advantage all the time, that's really nice. Uh, let's put Hook away. Hero side. Um, let's give me three green to stop them. <laughs> Magical thinking. No, they get to go second mover again because they just cost one. Okay, well, whatever. You can only pass once. Once you do, you're locked out of the rest of the turn. So we're tied on movement. That's fine. Oh. Well, I want that Brass Book Hive, so I put that away. That's not great. She only has one point in, uh... Yeah, in that case... That's my, my... My best overall play is to evoke Brass Bug on hero side. They'll give me five... Grass... And three each on here. This will be easier to beat overall. I feel like they just play that for the uh, card. It's still possible to beat me on one side, but yeah, there we go. 60 BP here, but I'll still move forward over here. They gain some, like return another card for reserve to your hand. That's really nice for uh, Baba Yaga. It basically allows you to cycle card advantage. That's really, really nice actually. But we both got what we want, which is advancement. It was a smart for them to do so because they can't beat me on water type with just two and zero. Um, of the two, six and eight. Six is nasty. Um. Do I want to use my hero ability right now? Yes, I do. Because then I can at least mitigate their card advantage engine. And my best bet for this... Grass is going to be harder to fight than... Earth terrain. 
So, let's see. But I can stop them hard on this end. Get rid of the card of Angelist. Still leaves me two to play with, which is enough for either of these cards. I can, they can stop me from moving, but they can't necessarily stop me from... They can't necessarily progress. I'll play it safe. And just leave this... Leave one side uncontested. Now that's five points. They need... They need to do a lot to... Oh, they could. Damn. Okay, so they advance twice. That sucks. They can play off you go again. That's nasty. I still have some options though. Let me see. Okay, well, now I have no choice but to brass fuck. I might have lost. I'm pretty sure I lost. They got a really, really gnarly turn on me and keep up the momentum and face that. It's hard on this deck. The others. I sacrificed a lot of uh I sacrifice I'm more fragile to momentum loss in exchange for a more immediate part out of uh, Axiom's uh, come into play effects. Like it's still possible for me to win, but it's gonna be rough. Double Amelia's, that's actually really nice. Especially since Amelia coming out from reserve is only one mana. That makes her very flexible. What? Oh, I forgot about that. GG. Yeah, purple has the ability to simply move. Damn. Small step, giant leap. A heavy investment at six mana just to cast it. But if all you need is that last step, this gets it for you. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Alright, I think that's pretty good. Um, testing wise, this is a fun deck, but I feel like Axiom isn't quite at the par level it needs to be yet. Actually, both Axiom and um, Yzmir, the purple, the purple faction, are a little weak compared to the other colors. The other ones have a little more, are a little juicier, you know, a little more well, well rounded in general. Oops. And Ordis, especially the blue faction, is just overpowered like blue always is. But I feel like I'm not too far away from equalizing against them. And there is a very, very powerful uh, Axiom deck, to be fair. 
a uh, traced axiom has a bunch of has a ton of carvage that it generates for free as soon as you uh, reach its threshold um And Subash just simply might not be the play. Subash might need a little more support to uh, really start to, start to uh, appear on lists. Or it could be misplaying. Like, I've been in Trace before. It just depends on my open hand and their overall game condition. One too many. No relevance yet. Um, I don't want this without robots. Nice start. Drawing to another one. That's, that's, that's hard. That is hard. <sighs> this is too early for you. And there are two other copies in a 40 card deck that's pretty easy to access, so I'll put this away. Companion side. This leaves me enough to play either of them, depending on what the situation calls for. Perfect. Let's put this on... They can't play this turn, so it's actually more important that I get rid of at least one of them. Keep that under control. Now, because Copel has zero water, they will be able to advance, but I still get double advance, so that's fine with me. And since I'll be going first next turn, I'm able to knock out Athena before she becomes a problem. Great. If he plays this, he'll be able to stop that and still have my left over to try to play something. So he might be able to win one, and even both, but it'll be much harder to win against uh, Tinkerbell on the snow land. <sighs> Having even one Haven out makes a big difference though. If I can if I could have had mine out, we would have been on much e more equal grounds. They invested that deeply? Okay, I follow that. Oh, it's activate. That's why. They want all of that. No, no, that, that's. Oh, that's weird. I feel like they. They did not need to invest that deeply. It's easy to win because uh, the, th the stuff they need to advance is not stuff I compare. I'm contesting for. The pillows over here, so I can challenge. Let's see what they're going for. I can see about trying to just keep pace. Suddenly became a little less viable. Let's see what they go for. Yeah, all right. Uh, then I need to boost the brass bug. I want to build two. I need four to build to cre create another one, which is gonna be hard. So the at least at minimum, I want to be able to move once. I can stop them from moving while advancing at the same time. That seems pretty ideal to me. Put her asleep down here. Nothing to discard to boost her. 
and then full investment I don't think he's able to benefit too much from Haven on this turn, thankfully, without playing lost enough into uh, to trigger forcefully trigger uh, reserve. But he's also far enough behind me that it doesn't really matter. What I am just looking forward to right now is making sure that they're in a position where they have to contest both sides to keep me from winning, which is a massive investment in resources that dilutes their ability to stop. 3-3 three, three, uh, Brass Bugs, which I'll be generating two of every turn now. It's also too big for Keylon, but he'll be able to get rid of the Coppelia, that's fine. You made a squad coffee in reserve, you do roll... Okay, that's not bad. It gets boosts. The main thing is, that's scary to play this turn gains one boost, which is really, really nice. To the right. But now I have second move versus advantage. So it actually becomes a little harder for them. Oh, I have a really strong play now. At seven mana, I have more than enough to do whatever I want. I really just need a six to reach a uh, brass buck hive. <laughs> Oh, actually, I should full commit to water because they can't. Water is outside of their uh, purview. And I'll also even be like just generating a ton of uh, earth resources to keep that one from moving as well. So if I need to, I can just buy another turn. Ah, okay, fine. Seven now, what are you gonna do? He was correct to play that and sabotage me. Because my turn would be even better. Uh, I don't know why you're playing that. Is it just to produce a brass bug in target exposition? Like, you need to be able to get three more water. We get four. Good. Uh, that's a good play. Now, they can't advance, because they also beat seven Earth. Uh, and they can't. They're too short. They have zero mana. All they can do is generate a card advantage at this point. Which is still very good. Let's not let's not let's not mistake anything here. When you play a permanent hand cost three or more, oh geez, this is a really good card. But I like multiple ways to boost my stuff now, so I'm not too worried. Um, I see that they're actually water advantage because of Lyra Chronicler if they want to try to if they if they keep this. That means that they want to try to keep me from a match on this route. And I have to go through here instead to uh, have a better time of it, which is what they're doing. Actually, no, 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 no it's fine because I can advance on through Earth Terrain as well. Oh no, I can still screw them over. Because I am first player now, which I can go this. Companion side. And then 
sabotage their best wire type. While still having one more move. Okay, they passed. Nice work, Rastar, but just not enough. One point away from gold. Can I get it before the end of the night? I think I can. Let's try to get gold. That would be a nice way to cap out the stream. Nice. Seer fix. Hey, Team Rocket. I don't want to start. That's a strong start. That's a strong start. I don't need you as a start. That's yeah, overall better. Like so. I want you as soon as possible. That's actually kind of annoying. Or that's resupply created or on target expedition. That's fine. That's fine. You can't stop me necessarily. We get our advancements. I want to boom that thing. Let's see how they play this. Like, this is too annoying to allow it to stay. But he may also play... You know, it's not going to be good Robin Hood right now. I won't be able to get rid of it. Then. It'll just snowball away if he gets Robin Hood. Okay. Um... No, that's so annoying. I don't like Robin. Robin's really annoying. Cards your opponent plays cost one more is so annoying. Now, hopefully, I do have a 
I do have a way around that. I can still just generate tokens. That still helps me a lot. But, God. Oh my god, double robins. I hate that so much. I can't even begin to describe how much I hate that. Fine. At least make it worth my while. <laughs> Let's run away. Let's run away. Ooh, let's run away. Let's run away. Ooh, let's run away. Let's run away. Ooh, let's run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the early other night. Along, along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can last long enough where I don't need this to get Brass Book out, but it'll be annoying. It'll be terribly annoying. Get this out. Put them on this side. You have to use four mana to knock that out, but that'll be worth it. Knock you out. That will minimize, minimize the damage. They still, they are still advantaged by having Robin Hood out at all. There's, it's probably the most controversial card in the game at the moment. Arguably the best overall uh, effect in the game, especially if you have multiples out at the same time. That just gets really frustrating. And because of uh, Waru's effect, to be able to sleep uh, Bureaucrats when they come into play. Uh, you be, you're able to extend their overall effectiveness longer than uh, they might otherwise uh, longer than they otherwise uh, may last. Like I'm okay with that. Oh no, I'm not so okay with that because it's asleep. I forgot. I just mentioned that, but that's fine because they have to fully commit to get that out. No, now they get a double advance. Oh no, they get one advance. That's annoying. Oh, it's annoying. I have to play this instead to maximize my effectiveness because that gets that's basically a plus four. But I don't want to trigger this. So I have to actually pass. Just to keep the dragon from going off. So they want to beat six, they have to actually fully commit. Oh, that's extra tedious. Oh, come on. So many sleep effects. Like, sleep is a bit of a two-edged sword because it does remove them from combat so that if it's a tiebreaker situation, you kind of don't want to have it happen that way. But if it's not a tiebreaker situation, like, these will stay into the next combat. That's really tedious. <laughs> now to get rid of the Brass Book Hive just for mana because I'm not in a situation. He's drawing to all of his um, Robin Hoods, which makes it really difficult to take advantage of uh, Coppelia. Um, I don't want to make it too easy for them to just trigger the dragon, so I just play Coppelia.
you'll effectively be able to take advantage of winning here with Toss. Ah, man, he stepped again. That's so good. And gain two boosts because of Sandman. You can kind of tell why this is the uh, tournament winning deck. Why the tournament was all top four. Waru. This deck has options. Let's give myself some options off of uh, Axiom Salvager here. Like, there's still one possible out, right? That wasn't quite it. Yeah, um, it doesn't really matter at this point. One step behind. It is what it is. Look at all these salmon. This is a really good deck. Like, if you can outmuscle them, I think Muna actually has a pretty good answer to this, and that Muna just persists. And if you try to sleep on them, you're they're just you're just giving them the win, right? Like the anchored effect is pretty good against sleeping effects. Because it basically is sleep except better. Anchored is strictly better than sleep. All right, one more, one more. Let's see if I can get the gold after all. One more, if I drop again, I'll just stop here because I'll just be not too far away from gold right now. <laughs> Arena season 19 ends on January 7th and the next expansion for Altered comes out end of January, so that's roughly where we are. Give me gold, baby! Honestly, I have to wonder if Waru would be nearly as powerful as he is if he had the sleep effect. Because I feel like that's about 90% of the power right there. It's not just the card draw, but Blue does have some incredibly consistent card draw. But given that a sleep doesn't impact on card abilities, it only removes your combat stats. There is a world where Maru would nearly be as powerful, or would nearly synergize as well as he does with Ketsukoto and uh, Robin Hood, simply by eratoing away the sleep effect on the ability. I think my opponent's having some difficulties connecting. Oh, I want to keep at least one of these because it's my best play against um, his stuff. Alright. Well, I definitely want Keelon Burst because it's really useful against uh, anchor targets. Give that. I want some early control because uh, they're going to snowball if I don't get rid of uh, their stuff early. Dun, 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 dun. That one's not too annoying. I can leave it alone, leave the kill on burst away. Although what does set up is the easier challenge on easier to keep me locked out this side. That's a little annoying. Uh let's get rid. Maybe not get rid of the burst. I'll get rid of the burst. 
Get rid of the boom. Since their best stat is in green, if they can't use it to win. That's fine. They're clearly setting up for some kind of spell, so get rid of the target permanent. That slows it down considerably. Good. That's where I want it to be. Do I want to... Yeah, I do. Put this away. Invoke Brass Bug on... Yeah, if I can force it to come over there, that'd be pretty good. And this one, make it harder to beat me. Get rid of you. Like, in order to beat this, they need to play something that can take up all those resources. And that's acceptable. This time I have second movers advance, I can just set mine aside. Well, that's good. Gain spooky player draws a card, you may put a card from him for reserve. That's pretty damn good. Okay, well I want to make sure that it doesn't impact the board too badly, so let me go ahead and produce a bug. But it'll only last that one turn, actually. So I'm maybe not too afraid of it yet. Like, I'm not too worried about them winning the one. On hero side. Because all those water effects, which is where his strings really are on aloe vera, just isn't applicable right now. Now, it stops me from advancing if he's able to uh, also boost up his uh, earth element, but that's an investment for one movement. For And he loses this side. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, that gets me a card as well, so I'm not too angry about that, because I'm, like, he's now ahead of me, but I'm in overall a bad position, I feel. Discard this guy, so I don't need that. I know some crazy plays available to me. Companion side. This sounds like a bow song. It is. Bow the whale. Oh, 
Oh, some crazy plays now. Holy shit. Sleep? Oh, that's fine. I was expecting you to advance this one anyhow. You just made it easier for me to challenge the next one. Like right now, I'm in a pretty good position to simply lock out the game. That's so much card draw. See, the thing I'm most worried about right now is the sleep. So if I can just stop that. And have four more mana for another double Ogun. Which is just crazy. Or I can just get rid of that. You only have one mod as well. Yeah, this is the... the slightly more economical choice. Five, six. Can hook one over. Perfect. Like I said, hook is so good. In this particular, in this. In this game's format and overall interactions, Hook is incredible. Now I just need to win on any side and keep them from moving on one side. I got another hook on me. Um, I kind of want extra flexibility with the mana, so let me put away one for nine. Just in case I want it. And I have double Frankenstein. Or just huge amounts of raw power. I just have stats up the wazoo. I have so many stats. And right now if he try if he can overcome one end, I can switch it over to the other and just win. Because he needs something big in order to uh, in order in order to prevent one side from going through. <laughs> East player draws a card. He still has five left. 
I don't really want him to have the ability to just go gigantic on one side. Yeah. I think this makes sense. Yep. And with that, I should be gold, baby. Gold League! Success! Good. Excellent. I am able to hold out against Muna Plants. Which is probably one of the best decks you can use against token decks just because of their persistence. They can put out stuff real cheap and when they can put out expensive stuff it tends to be overstated. And their sleep effects are really strong as well. But being able to play around sleep effects, be able to generate tokens up the wazoo. It's all gravy, baby. All right, that's pretty good. Thank you all for watching. I will have the VOD on this on my main site because I think there's a lot to talk about over here. All you need to do is edit out some of the stuff at the end. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Uh, please be sure to follow me on social media on both Twitter and Blue Sky. And of course, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitch, all under the same name, Lucian Zenner. And I will see you next time. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye, good night. And as always, my friends, eat well.